Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where you see every drop of coolant I spill. And speaking of coolant, we have a coolant leak. Um, I drove it and I broke it, which seems very fitting. But anyway, uh, it looks like I have a coolant leak from the uh, water pump. And in talking to Kubota swappers, I am going to take it off, remove the gasket, clean it up. The thought is the gasket that's on it has dried up. So we're going to put some um, Permatex on it to seal it. We're going to let it set. Uh, but it also allows us to do a couple of other things that I forgot to do. Specifically, I want to hook up the heater hoses to the heater core. Right now I'll have no heat. But I also need to uh, install the coolant temperature sensor, which I also forgot to do. Uh, the other thing I did do, and I got a spare one, uh, the lower radiator hose that I installed a couple of weeks ago, I cut it a tad too short. Now, it works, but it's really at full extension. So I got another hose, the exact same model. I'm going to try installing it this time without cutting it. And I'll keep the hose I have as a backup because it does work. So anyway, a lot to do. Hopefully we'll get the coolant situation figured out. So I'm left. After jacking up the front end of the Wrangler, I put a bucket underneath the radiator and started draining the coolant out of the radiator. I did try to minimize how much coolant went everywhere by turning the steering wheel, but inevitably coolant still goes everywhere. Next I removed the upper radiator hose. Moving back underneath the Wrangler, I completely removed the drain plug from the radiator to get the remainder of the coolant. After that I then put the front of the Wrangler on a jack stand and then I was able to remove the jack so I'd have better access to the lower radiator hose. Because of the serpentine belt, getting the hose off is a little bit of a trick. You have to take the top clamp off from the top and the bottom clamp off from underneath the Wrangler. Next, I loosened the tensioner pulley to remove the belt and then I removed the pulley off of the water pump. Using a pair of pliers, I removed the hose on the top of the thermostat housing. I did the same thing for the hose that goes from the water pump to the cooler on the oil filter. I then moved my drain bucket over to drain out the remainder of the coolant from the engine block. I did remove the hose just to check it for any cracks or leaks and if so I was going to replace it with a new hose. It goes by too quickly on time lapse, but this is where I discovered that a lot of the bolts on the left hand side of the water pump were very loose. I could actually unscrew them with just my fingers. I did consider just tightening the bolts and putting everything back together, but I decided the best idea was to take everything apart and add blue Permatex to the gasket to create a better seal. It's difficult to tell, but there is a thin gasket on the water pump, but it wasn't ripped and actually looked okay, so I just put Permatex over it before reinstalling it onto the engine block. Now some of the longer bolts that went in the water pump actually looked like they had coolant on them, so I put Permatex on the very ends of them just to ensure a good seal. With all the bolts back in the water pump, I start tightening them with a wrench. Next, I turn my attention to the thermostat housing so I can install the coolant temperature sensor for my gauges. It was shortly after this that I realized the coolant heater hoses that I had that I was going to try connecting to the heater core were not the correct size, so I ended up just reconnecting all the hoses I had taken off earlier. Next it was time to reinstall the water pump pulley onto the water pump, but as Ronnie would say, I wasn't holding my mouth right, so it took a little while to get the pulley to line up with the bolt holes on the water pump. With the pulley secured to the water pump, I then reinstalled the serpentine belt onto the front of the motor. Then I reattached and secured the upper radiator hose, before then turning my attention to the lower radiator hose that I needed to cut to fit. 
This time I just trimmed off a little bit of hose that was going to connect to the engine block. After installing some new clamps onto the hose, I reattached the hose between the engine block and the radiator. First I secured the clamp on the radiator before moving to securing the clamp on the engine block. With everything reinstalled, I lifted the Wrangler to remove the jack and then turned my attention to refilling the radiator with coolant. Lastly, I tried to reinstall the coolant overflow bottle, but realized I didn't have the original shroud installed on the radiator. Um, I know I said I was going to try hooking up the heater hoses. Turns out the hoses I have are not the right size, so I decided to just ignore it and for now. It's March. Soon I'm not going to need heat at all, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, it actually looks like the issue was the water pump, when I went to take it off to check the gasket and everything, it was like three or four bolts were just completely loose, like I could spin them loose. So um, I replaced the lower radiator hose. I'm a lot happier with it. It's not as tight. Um, and what I mean by that was the other one felt like it could pop off because it was so short. So this one has some give to it. I put some Permatex on the water pump pulley and uh, I think I've plumbed everything back up. I think everything's tight. I've put coolant back in it. So yeah, let's fire it up. That <laughs> never gets old. <laughs> Anyway, um, I don't see any leaks. So I don't see any leaks from the upper or lower radiator hose. Uh, I went ahead and installed the uh, water temperature sensor. That doesn't look to be leaking. So yeah, I would call that a success. So that's all I'm gonna do for today. So anyway, leave a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. If you didn't, you know what to do. And hey, if you haven't subscribed to their channel, consider subscribing. And if you have, as always, Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video very soon. Goodbye.